Hi, this video is the art of hair transplant restoration surgery on a Caucasian man who has a receding hairline and temple as well. And uh, so he did quite a bit of research. He actually watched most of my videos, so that's good. So, and but you know he's watching other people's videos as well. And I want to see the result and the before and after. And um, it's important because with with the hair transplant, it's not just the surgical skill of the surgeon. It's good. Again, the surgical skill um, would dictate the density, and but the artistic and aesthetic detail is very very important um, to create how natural the hairline for an individual. Uh, again, when I create the hairline, it's a custom hairline because each person's um, they all have their own unique hairline, and I build it according to your facial structure. Um, as long as it's proportional from the mid eyebrow to the hairline is a third, from the mid labella to the tip of the, the nose is a third, tip of the nose and the bottom chin is a third. And the more narrow the face, the more arched back the hairline is, the more round the face, the more flat the hairline is. So on average, from the mid eyebrow to the hairline for Caucasian men, it's around 7.5 to 8.5 centimeters. Uh, for this client, actually 8.25 and then I measure from the midpoint to the side as well. Um, as you can see, if you can turn this way, uh, this tempo has gone back. So if I just lower the hairline without bringing the, without bringing the tempo, it has a really wide forehead and it won't look natural. And again, from the midpoint to the side, it actually it can be as low as seven and it can be as high as around nine centimeter. And um, for his, it's actually eight centimeter. So from the midpoint to the side for his is eight centimeter on both sides and from the mid eyebrow to the mid uh, hairline is around eight and a quarter and it's perfectly matched for his hair. So we've been attempting at least 2300 by eight, but on the top here it's around 2300 already so in the temple um, you're going to need around at least um, 150 to 250 per size um, probably going to end up around 2500 roughly around there. We'll be harvesting using the FUE method as you know, FUE is the most advanced technology available and the least invasive of the two. It leaves you minimal scar, um, tiny dots of scar scattered throughout the back like a mosaic pattern, allow you to wear your hair shorter. It, it's versus the strip method, which is the uh, called the FUT. It's more antiquated method and it actually scalping an individual and cutting the piece of skin with hair. And, and suturing you up, it leave you a leaning scar. Um, that that method is fading out, and and, and I still do um, both FUV and the strip method. But for the client who lose all his hair, last class five, six, or seven, and you need to move a large volume of hair per day, like six thousand graft as a or five, six thousand. Then the strip method is better, beneficial because the strip method is more efficient to harvest big, large number of graft. But unfortunately, you had to be willing to live with a linear scar in the back of the head permanent for the rest of your life. No one's going to see the, the line of scar if you leave your hair long. But if you decide to shave your head, or if you're an, um, an actor and you need to have the role where you got to cut your hair short, a strip might not be an option. Um, and so the FUE is more popular because it's not just minimal scar, but it's, it left the scalp intact and we're just pulling one root at a time. That means it's less invasive, less bleeding, less chance of infection, um, to overall less side effect. And, uh, but when you come to FUE, it really depends on, uh, on, on the eye and hand co coordination of the surgeon. There are three groups um, that does FUE. There's one who are FUE specialists, and that means the surgeon himself sitting there pulling one root at a time. And that group uh, tend to produce the best result because the surgeon is an FUE specialist. And the, uh, the question the audience should always ask is not, do you do the surgery? Because some surgeons just make a couple holes and do not pull the hair graft one at a time and say they do surgery. The precise question should always ask, are you the one who personally pulling one root at a time? Because only the surgeon with the knowledge and the skill and to understand how to harvest the hair graft intact at what angle, what pressure, and 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 how to adapt it from, from the bottom of the head to the top or from different sides because our head shape is not perfectly in the sphere. And so it's very technical when it comes to FUE. 
Um, so that's very important. And, and you know, some surgeon who cannot do the FUE himself, so buy a robot machine that has the technician out controlling the robot. The robot cannot harvest the healthy graph as much as I would. And why would I per inefficiently sitting there doing one at a time? Um, so the robots tend to have more transaction and more damage in the roots, and that's why their density won't be the same. And the third group, and that's the worst one, is the uh, neograft. Neograft is the surgeon doesn't touch you at all. So the, some doctor who just want to open the clinic, say hi to you, do consultation, say bye after uh, your payment. But really, when you go and operate, the 100% is operated by the uh, technician, and that could be very dangerous. Because um, let alone that, just the extracting the healthy hair graft. But what if they messed up on the design of the hairline, and uh, it will look very awkward. And so and you end up, I have to fix quite a bit of those uh, uh, type. Uh, so for this one, I will be personally pulling one graph at a time. And once we get the shape down, we will transplant a very precise angle of 35, 45 in the front, increase when you go backward, and change when you go a different direction. The tempo is really flat and pointed backward. The front is different. And then not only the precise angle is important, the selection of hair graph is important. We try and plant rows and rows, single hair graph in the front, followed by root to go two hair, three hair, and four hair in the back for bulk and volume. I'm very excited for this gentleman because he's a really handsome guy. And so through the years, his hairline went up. So once we lower the hairline, give him a full set of hair, and frame the face better and more proportional, you're going to notice that his natural good-looking feature that God created for him, his eye, his nose, and all and all those features will come out. And, uh, and he'll gain not only his look, but his youth back. Uh, I'm very excited. Now, of course, with the FUE, the downside, it will cost more than a strip method, and we'll have to shave the head more aggressively. We don't have to shave the top, but we have to shave from side to side. But shaving the top as well is very important because that will give you better density, less damaging to the root, and less shock loss, and um, overall better result. So this is the Art of Hair Transplant Restoration Surgery on a Caucasian man with uh, receding hairline and corner and temple. Thank you.